Hello, welcome to our webinar. We are so excited to share with you some information about the new spring 2025 cohort for the MS in Education International Teaching and Global Leadership Program. My name is Serena Stewart. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions here in the School of Education. I am going to share just some fast facts about the School of Education to start us off. Then I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Adams. She will go over all of the details about the Spring 2025 cohort. We'll end with important admissions information and application dates and deadlines you'll need to know. And we'll leave some time at the end for your questions. So please, at the, that time, use the Q&A function to ask any questions that you have about the information that we are sharing today. The School of Education here at Johns Hopkins has a little under 1,800 students enrolled. We have over 100 faculty members who are full-time joint emeriti and courtesy appointments. Annually, about 920 degrees are awarded, and we're very proud to have 24,000 alumni. Our students are 24% international, coming from 47 countries across the globe. About 75% of our students are female and 25% of them are male. We are very excited that we are ranked number eight in the best education schools by the U.S. News and Global Report. Um, so at this time, I am going to go ahead and pass it over to Dr. Adams. She'll introduce herself and the Spring 2025 cohort. Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Adams, um, and I'm just picking up here um, from Serena's discussion of our rankings. In addition to being very excited about ranking number eight in the U.S. News and World Report's Best Education Schools, I wanted to share other international uh, rankings that we have for our international audience here. So you can see that not only is the ITGL program Spring 2025 cohort part of a top-ranked school of education, but a top-ranked national and global university. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. So again, I am Jennifer Adams. I am the director for the ITGL program. Um, I've been here at Johns Hopkins University leading this program for about a year, but I have a, more than 20 years of experience working in the field of global and international education. So I'm very excited about all of you that are interested in joining this master's program and developing your own career in the space of global and international education. As you can see here, I've spent time working at both Stanford University and Drexel University in their international and comparative education programs. I've also worked as a teacher in Hong Kong and Taiwan, and as a researcher for many years in China. I hold both a master's and doctoral degree from Harvard University, and also have spent um, time overseas on various fellowships in Indonesia and in Israel. One of my favorite things as being um, the director of ITGL is working with ITGL students, and I have the opportunity to do that in both courses, in the fall semester, I teach a course on global trends in education. And in the spring semester, I teach a course on global education policy and analysis. And those are courses that ITGL students take with me um, all year. In addition, I have several research interests in the field of international and comparative ed, where I work with students if they are interested in those issues, and I've listed some of them here, but some of my more recent work looks at global citizenship education, uh, climate change education, child welfare and protection in various contexts, and then I do a lot of work on um, educational and social policy. And so that's just a little bit about me. Let's turn to sort of our new exciting um, event here, and that is the introduction of a new spring 2025 cohort for the ITGL program. So one of the things that I wanted to say to start us off is that 
we will be having another webinar in September on September 11th talking about our traditional ITGL program. There are some components of ITGL spring 2025 cohort that are the same as our traditional ITGL program, but there are some new features and our webinar today really is about highlighting and explaining some of those new features for you. And so some of the key characteristics of spring 2025 cohort um, are, are listed here below. And I'm going to briefly go over them now, but then talk more specifically about these different components in the upcoming slides. So first, the program start date is soon. It's January 21st, 2025, which means you'll be, you could be joining us in just a few months. This spring start date allows us to provide four semesters at Johns Hopkins University, and that would be starting again in spring 2025, and then have a intensive summer semester of eight weeks in summer 2025. And then the students would be here in fall of 2025 and complete the program in spring of 2026. So it's four semesters here on campus at Johns Hopkins University. Because of this structure, students also will be able to participate in the commencement ceremony with the rest of the School of Education students in their semester that they complete the program in May of 2026. One of the other um, important features of spring 2025 cohort is that students are eligible to apply for a part-time internship of up to about 20 hours a week in their spring of 2026, so in their final semester. Alternatively, students can take three semesters of extended learning. So again, one of the um, real emphasis of the spring 2025 cohort, and I would say ITGL in general, are these applied experiences. As, as a member of the spring 2025 cohort, you have a choice of having three semesters of extended learning or doing two semesters of extended learning and applying for an internship in your last semester. And then finally, two things about our focus areas. One, we are limiting the focus areas to just three of our most popular areas in for spring 2025, and that would be teaching English as a foreign language and entrepreneurship and education, where we have a high demand for these areas. And then we are launching a new focus area in applied research that I'm super excited about. So I wanted to take just a couple seconds for those of you that may not be familiar with ITGL to talk a little bit about our program features. So ITGL, regardless of when you come and join us, is a program that's really designed to prepare future global education leaders to be innovators in all areas in business, technology, schools, policy communities, and governments, right? So in ITGL, we really believe that educational expertise belongs in all sectors. Education should be for everyone. Educators belong everywhere. And our job is really to prepare our students to be innovative leaders as teachers and school leaders, but also to infuse that educational expertise in all kinds of settings. So as a result, ITGL is an intensive program. And it, what we try to do during students' time with us is provide the knowledge that they need to, to know about the most important aspects of education. So what is the sort of foundational knowledge that students need to know when they think about education for the 21st century? We also provide students with an informed global perspective on educational trends and research. So how do I situate what I'm thinking about and how I'm leading education within this global network of educational systems and leaders? An opportunity to develop targeted expert knowledge in a focus area that students select themselves. These unique applied learning experiences that students can develop through both extended learning or a final internship semester, which is, I think, very important for our students to be working in an actual educational context and applying the new knowledge, attitudes, and skills in a real life situation. And then they are able to finish their program by pulling this work together in a capstone portfolio. And you just sort of see this in a different visual way here, the way that we think about what we're doing here in ITGL, that we have these foundational core courses that represent 
core knowledge that educators need to know is our foundation. We build on that with a focus area that you might select. And for spring 2025, that would be applied research, teaching English as a foreign language or entrepreneurship and education. You go a little further by applying that knowledge and applied experiences through extended learning or internships and then also have an opportunity to develop a capstone portfolio. So this is really the way our curriculum to develop global innovative educational leaders unfolds during your time in the program. So I wanted to lay this curriculum out for spring 2025 a little more specifically because it is new. So you can see here, again, emphasizing some of the key dimensions that the program start date again is in January. So January 21st, 2025. The credits that we use for these programs are the same as we do with traditional ITGL. So it's a 33 credit program for both the entrepreneurship and education focus area and for the applied research focus area and 33, 35 credits for TEFL. One of the differences is that's really important is that these courses now or these credits are spread over four semesters instead of three semesters. So you can see here, the spring, summer, fall, and spring semesters. So it's four semesters at Johns Hopkins. I have the core knowledge courses that we've been talking about. What do all global educational leaders need to know? Coded here in blue. So you can see some of these topics here from global leadership, exploration and mind brain and teaching, introduction to entrepreneurship education, because we believe that entrepreneurial mindset is so important for all educational leaders right now. And a seminar and teacher leadership, that's just some of the courses we have in our core area. The yellow is specialized focus areas courses. Those would be different depending on what focus area you select. And I do have the examples on a later slide for the spring 2025 focus areas. And then you see in green, the extended learning experiences or the extended learning plus a possibility of an internship, the final semester experiences. We do not do an applied experience during summer because the summer is an eight week intensive period. And we find that it's just too much during the summer period. And then very specially, uh, when you complete your program in spring 2026, you can participate in the Johns Hopkins University School of Education and also university graduation ceremony with all of the graduates, which um, was my first time doing this this past spring. And it was a really incredible experience. And so we're very excited to like offer this to our spring 2025 uh, students. So one of the, I want to say, most frequent questions that I get as the director of ITGL is, what is extended learning? And since it's just an important part of what we do, I wanted to take a minute just to elaborate on extended learning and then talk a little bit also about the internship possibility. So we really believe that students learn the most when they have an opportunity to apply some of their knowledge in a real world educational context. Students are able to gain more of an understanding of different models of education, the way different types of institutions, schools, businesses, nonprofit organizations, startups, research organizations work by actually using their knowledge to work on specific projects in these organizations. Let's say typically students align their extended learning experience um, with their focus area, but this is not always the case. Sometimes they use their extended learning to branch off in a new area so that they can develop knowledge in their focus area and also develop knowledge like in another space. And so what our students do is that they really are placed in, in an educational context, most of them around Baltimore, but some of them can be a little farther afield, like in Washington, D.C. And then some students this year, we've had a few students doing online experiences, working on uh, global, global businesses or global startups. Students work about four to six hours a week. This, our school actually helps with the placement in these organizations. We have partners that come back and work with us year after year. We have a coordinator of extended learning. And students really have the opportunity to really synthesize the knowledge that they've learned already, to develop new knowledge. And I think one of the additional things that's helpful about extended learning is that students are able to think about 
types of careers that will be of interest to them when they graduate. So they might develop a whole new interest that affects their career path or decide maybe they don't want to work in a particular area. But we find in addition to it, it being a really strong learning experience, it helps students think about their career pathway forward and may also help students get the hands-on experience they need to apply for jobs or to secure an OPT experience when they graduate. Here are just some brief examples of the diverse types of organizations where we've been placing students over this past year. So you can see that there's a, a, a variety of types of organizations. We have some students you know, working in schools, helping teachers or shadowing school leaders, but we also have students that are doing research in some of the Johns Hopkins University Research Centers working for nonprofit organizations. We've had several students this past year, for example, at the Refugee Youth Project, working in various capacities. Some students will work with an educational business, startup, you know, corporation, and then others might be working in the educational technology space. And so there's a really just variety of experiences. In the spring 2025 cohort, students will have the option of either having three semesters of extended learning. That's a possibility that students could do it uh, spring and then fall and spring, which is even more, I think, applied experiences. Some of our students do the same extended learning experience the whole time and become really involved in their organizations. And other students may decide to do two extended learning experiences during that period. For spring 2025, we do have this new option where students actually qualify for spring um, 2026 CPT, which would allow them to apply for CPT and develop a more extensive um, internship experience. So instead of engaging in extended learning for four to six hours that last semester, which is a little bit lighter on coursework, students could apply for an internship of about up to 20 hours a week. So a really new exciting option for spring 2025 students as well. Now I just wanted to talk briefly about the focus areas. So again, one of the key components of what we're doing in ITGL is providing foundational knowledge in 21st century learning and educational expertise, but also helping students become more of an expert in a, a targeted area within education. We call these focus areas. In spring 2025, students will have the opportunity to select one of three focus areas teaching English as a foreign language, entrepreneurship education, or a new focus area that, again, I'm super excited about because of my own research, applied research. So I wanted to spend a couple minutes talking in a little more detail about applied research because it is new. So in the applied research focus area, the real goal is for students to be focusing like their expert time on developing the knowledge and skills that they need to conduct applied research in professional organizations, in research organizations, in international development organizations like UNESCO, the World Bank, Save the Children, non-governmental uh, non organizations, or to prepare to launch into a PhD program or other types of doctoral study. So we really see this, uh, this area developing people that will have the research skills to move into entry-level research positions and in big research organizations, or that this will be the beginning of their research career and that we'll be launching them into doctoral study. Um, and to do this, we're really focusing this time in building on building methods. And so those focus area courses will be about research methods. These research methods will focus on, uh, these courses will focus on an introduction to social science, social research methods. And then there'll, there'll be a course related to quantitative methods, either basic statistics or intermediate statistics, depending on students' background. And then also an opportunity to develop uh, qualitative research skills through a qualitative in inquiry course. So this really provides a foundation of research knowledge for the students. And then we're matching that with, in the applied, fo applied research focus area, the students will be conducting their extended learning experience 
inside one of the many Johns Hopkins University Research Centers. At the School of Education, we have several research centers, the Center for Research and Reform and Education, the Center for Safe and Healthy Schools, the Center for Social Organization of Schools, the Center for Technology and Education, or the Institute for Education Policy. And this aspect of the applied research focus area will allow students to extend the methods that they're learning in their coursework by applying them on a real research project with real researchers in one of our research centers. Again, our students in the applied research focus area are eligible to apply for an internship that final semester, and we would be encouraging students to focus that internship also on a research experience. And then in the seminar, in our seminar for teacher leadership, students will have an opportunity to develop a research focus proposal in that class, which also is really helpful for students who are thinking about um, both demonstrating the skill of developing a research proposal if they're going into the job market, but also helping students uh, consolidate their research interest if they're thinking about putting together a doctoral application. One of the motivations actually for the applied research focus area, in addition to my own deep interest in research, was that we do currently have several ITGL students uh, well, I guess graduates now, former students who came to ITGL with um, really strong interests in research. And we were able to prepare them while they were here. And as you can see here, that many of them have moved on to uh, primarily fully funded and very excellent PhD programs in the US. The applied research focus area is um, an innovative way for us to do this in a more systematic way to think about how can we best prepare students to be researchers and to move on into doctoral programs. Here are the courses in the different focus areas that I mentioned. If you think of my way back to my earlier slide, I had yellow focus area one, focus area two, focus area three courses on that. Here I've actually listed out what the particular courses are for each of the focus areas that are available to spring 2025 students. So you can see those applied research focus area courses that I just mentioned over on the left. You can also see the focus area courses that, again, one of these is taken um, in three of the semesters. So you, it, the first semester you would take planning a new venture, for example, for entrepreneurship, and then another semester you would take launching a new venture, and then another one you would take sustainable venture. So you can thread this focus area knowledge through your time with us. And then you can also see on the far right of the slides that the teaching English as a foreign language students do take two additional one credit courses. And that is why the teaching English as a foreign language program is a 35 credit focus area compared to 33. And I just want to sort of wrap up here with um, ex emphasizing that many of the advantages that we see with our traditional ITGL program are still available and running strong for those of you that want to apply to take advantage of some of the opportunities in the spring 2025 cohort. Master's degree from a top eight school of education and top nine national university. The focus areas that we have in ITGL are really aligned with market demand in areas where we're seeing growth in educational careers. I think the extended learning aspect of ITGL and now paired with the possibility of a larger internship in the final semester really reflect the applied experiential focus that we have throughout the program. Many of our students are working on projects during their coursework and faculty, in addition to thinking about what is the knowledge our students need to learn, we're thinking about what do students need to be able to do, right? So that's the applied experiential piece. And we're thinking about particular skills, for example, such as um, you know, analyzing data, writing white papers, creating podcasts, but we're also thinking about 21st century social emotional skills, like how do we help our students communicate? How do we help them collaborate with one another? How do we teach them to be leaders? And that really reflects the applied nature of our program. Of course, dedicated, experienced, world-renowned faculty, love and respect all of my colleagues. 
We have a residential model for ITGL with, I would say, a holistic support um, model where students are provided with support outside of the classroom as well as in the classroom. A, an extremely engaged a global alumni network. I was in China actually two times last year um, meeting with our alumni, but I also met with alumni like in, in Thailand and other parts of the world as well. And we, I think, do a very nice job thinking about how to help students marshal what they've learned while they're at Johns Hopkins and move into careers or further graduate study. So these are some of the things that really set us apart. Okay, now transitioning from the program information, thank you, Jennifer, for um, just going over the spring 2025 cohort. We're so excited. Um, I'm going to now transition into admissions application requirements, what you need to do to apply to the new spring 2025 cohort. So at minimum, all applicants have to meet the following requirements. So there's an online application form that you must submit. You can find that on the Johns Hopkins website. There is an $80 application fee. You'll need to upload your resume and your essay. You can find the essay prompt on the website, on the admissions detail website for the ITGL program. You'll need two letters of recommendation, official transcripts. Many times for our international students, they have credentials um, or degrees that they have taken outside of the United States. If this is true for you, then you'll need to supply a course by course evaluation in lieu of those official transcripts. You'll need to complete a video screening. This is done by ACEE Global, and you'll need to select one of the three focus areas that Jennifer has already covered. We already talked a little bit about that course by course evaluation in lieu of your transcripts if your degree was earned outside of the United States for international students. In addition to that, we do have another extra um, requirement for international students, and that is submitting a passing ILETS or TOEFL score. You can find more information on all of the details of international admission on our website. It's education.jhu.edu slash international. So now to go over the admissions timeline as far as when to apply for the new spring 2025 cohort and what to expect. So the application is open now. It opened on July 2nd, so you can apply today. The final date to schedule your screening with ACEE Global is November 8th, just a week before the final application deadline. The deadline to submit your application is November 15th. And just note that this is the end of our application uh, cycle. So when we say application deadline, we don't just mean the submitted application. We want all of your uh, documents, uh, your resume, your transcripts, your screening to be complete by this date. So that way we can make a decision on your application pretty quickly. If you receive an offer of admission after you accept your offer, honorable enrollment deposit of $3,000 will be due. This uh, slide briefly goes over the tuition rates for the program. For ITGL, um, there is the tuition rate plus a $1,500 technology fee, and there is the $3,000 non-refundable enrollment deposit. That is due before you pay your tuition after you accept your offer, and then tuition payments come later. We are very excited to offer uh, some very limited number of merit-based scholarships for the spring 2025 cohort. In order to be eligible for the Global Leader Scholar Award, you do need to have a complete application by our application deadline on November 15th. In addition to that, we want to give our students some external scholarship resources since the funding that we have is pretty limited. There are some additional uh, resources here, some websites, some organizations 
for you to look into. I highly recommend that you do this as soon as you're completed with your application so that you can secure additional funding if needed. If you are a U.S. citizen, we encourage you to submit the FAFSA. That's the free application for federal student aid. All applicants are encouraged to do that while they're applying to the School of Education. And just know that approximately 82% of our degree-seeking students do borrow financial aid and graduate loans through the FAFSA and through um, the federal government. So those are just some, some brief things that you can do as far as scholarships and funding to look into. At this time, we are going to open up the uh, Q&A. So I did see that there are two uh, questions already in the chat. However, if you have additional questions, please put them in the Q&A function now so we can go over your questions. So the first question um, was about the cohort size. So if you want to talk a little bit, Jennifer, about the size of the cohort, maybe um, what we're anticipating for each focus area and the capacity for spring. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And so the spring cohort for ITGL, so spring 2025, is going to be smaller than the traditional uh, ITGL cohort program because we're trying a new, we're trying a new thing. We're really excited about it, but we're piloting this option for students. And so... And, and that's one of the reasons we actually limited the focus areas while we're doing this. So we're anticipating, you know, 10 to 15 students in each of the focus areas. There might be a little bit wiggle room there to adjust that up as high as 20, but we're really anticipating 10 to 15 students in each of the focus areas to tr work on this new model. Awesome. Thank you. And then the next question um, and the final question at this time is if they are admitted to the fall, can you defer to the spring? So at this time, the program does not offer any deferments. However, if you are interested in spring, you can reapply. Definitely reach out to the admissions office via email. I'm happy to help you with that process. Get um, anything that you have submitted as far as official documentation transferred to a new application. Um, so you can email the admissions office at soe-apply. That will go to me. I'm happy to help you in, um, you know, reapplying for the spring semester. Um, can I just jump in there, Serena? On yeah, absolutely. On two so for one... Sure. If you have an admit offer for fall cohort 2025, we're expecting you next week. I've already been looking at my course list and I'm so excited about all the courses that I have in global trends. So I hope that we'll see you. Um, and then the other piece I just wanted to emphasize based on um, our experience last year is that if you are thinking about applying that timeline that Serena shared with you is pretty condensed for the spring 2025 admission. Like November 15 is like almost tomorrow, right? And you'll be here before you know it. So I would suggest that you get your transcripts into a world education service like right away because it takes longer to get your transcript evaluated than sometimes you plan. So even if you're thinking of applying, I would suggest making scheduling your interview with ACEE and getting your transcript evaluated so that you're not pressed for time. I wonder yes, if I, I, I second that. <laughs> I have another uh, part of the response here. Um, this is Ms. Mayotte speaking. If you were admitted for fall 24 and decided not to come, and you're asking about deferring that admission, that's something we can help you with. And you can you can contact our SOE admissions office. Is that correct, Serena? Yes, yes. You'll have to reapply, but we can help you with that for sure. Yeah, we've had we've had quite a few of our admitted students who applied for fall 24 and then were not able to make it, but now they're very interested in this spring format. So that's very exciting to us. We'd love to help you with that. Definitely. Um, would you be able to talk a little bit about the Global Leadership Scholarship um, as far as the ideal candidate um, or any requirements that they would need? Yeah, sure. And so I guess there are a couple key pieces for the Global uh, Leader Scholar Award. So 
I guess traditionally when we're admitting students for either, you know, fall 2025 or spring 2025, we have several students in ITGL that are new to the field of education. And so having an educational background is actually not a requirement to be admitted into ITGL. We're excited about having people that had like econ degrees or, you know, business degrees or music degrees think about how they can use their undergraduate knowledge with a master's degree in education. When we look at the um, global, the candidates for the merit scholarship for the global leader scholar for education, we are looking for students who have had some type of educational experience, right? Because we're really expecting them to be like leaders in this program. So I'd say there's sort of three pieces, like some type of educational uh, experience that could be research experience on an educational project. It could be um, an internship with an organization like UNICEF. So some type of uh, re educational related experience. Also some leadership experience. So we're looking for students who've had like leadership roles um, in various capacities, like in an internship um, in their former school, in a club that they've run. We're really looking at the application, both the resume, the recommendation letters, their interview for those leadership characteristics. And then of course, this is a merit-based scholarship. So we're looking for strong students. And so this doesn't mean you have to have a 4.0, but it means that you have to have a strong academic record and we feel confident about your academic success in ITGL. Does that make sense? Definitely, thank yeah. you. Um, another question was about extended learning. This is a very general question and I know you went over it in detail That's in our fine. presentation, um, but if you just wanna give just a quick explanation on extended learning and what that placement looks like. Yeah, sure, so um, if you're a late joiner, I encourage you to watch the video that comes out after of this talk. I did try to provide a lot of details about extended learning, but in short, extended learning, I think one way to think about it is almost like a mini internship. The academic experience during ITGL is um, quite like intense. You're learning a lot. And so this academic experience allows the extended learning experience allows you to get that applied experience working in an educational context, applying your coursework and knowledge and getting some hand-on experience, but it's a, a relatively short period of time each week. Most of our students do it for about four to six hours each week, which is much less. Most traditional internship programs are more than 10 hours, right? So we think we keep Fridays open on the ITGL schedule. We don't have courses on Fridays so that students can be in Baltimore, DC online doing this extended learning experience, working. And what people do, and again, this is on the slide previously, they do all kinds of different things. So they might be working as a research assistant. They might be actually working as a teaching assistant. They could be shadowing an educational leader. They do different things depending on their interests. Thank you. Um, another question is, do we know of any upcoming um, near future events in China with alumni? Oh, that's actually a great question. Great um, um, question. Um, I do not have alum the alumni calendar uh, of events sort of set yet. Um, I can, if anyone wants to sort of follow up with me, I'm happy to connect people with alumni and certainly the program will share information. Last year, we had events in China in February and then I also visited in March and was able to meet with alumni. The other piece is that we do have um, ITGL alumni ambassadors. So these are people that have graduated from ITGL that have applied to be ambassadors that are very um, closely connected with the program. We also have a group of alumni that organize uh, a China conference every year that just happened actually in August. So I'm also happy to connect people to the alumni ambassador network so that they can find you can find out more about um, our alumni, what they're up to and what their experience was like in ITGL. Awesome. Okay. Another question is for the applied research focus area. Is there a paper or thesis required for graduation? No. So we didn't, are not requiring a paper or thesis for graduation. We're that doesn't mean students may not participate in them as a part of their research center applied learning experience. 
some students who work on research projects at centers join a research project at the right time and might be part of a publication. It's not something there that we are requiring, but we are requiring that that extended learning or internship experience that all three of them are spent working in a research center. Um, because we find that when students are moving on to uh, research jobs professionally, organizations are less interested in a, a large document like a thesis, and they're more interested in actual skills so that when students are joining a research organization, they can say, I know how to analyze data, I've designed a survey, I can use qualitative interviewing or conduct a focus group. So we're really interested in building the research skills that you need to be a successful researcher rather than you just doing one focused uh, paper or thesis. Awesome. Um, there's one more question that just came in. Um, so can TEFL students uh, take extra courses for the Maryland teacher license during their semesters? That's a really good question. I don't think I've had anyone ask that of me before. My And it's something I'm certainly happy to like look into. And I don't know if Ms. Mayotte has heard this question because she has been part of ITGL longer than I have. My first reaction would be that taking extra courses on top of the ITGL schedule sounds like a lot. Our program is relatively, uh, well, no, not relatively. Our program is rigorous. We're really expecting students to put 100% of themselves in their coursework and an extended learning. So I feel like it would be challenging to take extra courses, but I, I don't want to totally rule it out. I'd like to like learn more about it. Yeah, thank you. And I could add just a little bit to this. It is a very good clarifying question because what this uh, brings to light is that in order to have a teacher license, one would need to actually be certified as a teacher. That's a whole program that would require an internship in schools. It is a, as, as uh, Dr. Adams was just saying, it is, it's a, it's a totally different experience and something you perhaps might pursue after but it is not the same as what our program provides. So thank you for asking that question because it does help to clarify the difference. Thank you so much. That is all of the answered question or open questions we have at this point. Um, so I just wanna thank everyone so much for their time and attending today. If you have any additional questions that pop up after our webinar, or if your question pops up and you needed some clarifying um, information, please feel free to reach out to us. I am here to answer all of your admissions related questions. Um, and then um, Ms. Mayotte can answer all of your questions in relation to the program. Um, we are happy that you took the time out of your schedule to be with us here today. Uh, and just as a reminder, if you are interested in fall of 2025, we do have an upcoming webinar that goes into the details about ITGL and our regular cohort on September 11th. So we hope that you would be able to join us at that time. So nice seeing everyone. Please get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you for being here.